Fong is a fingers cartoonist deceived by his company and wants to find a powerful warrior to fight against them. He finds the perfect person for that job, but the only problem is that the warrior doesn't want to get paid through money and would prefer if Fong obeyed his special requests instead. A handsome man is rushing through an empty corridor of a company as he angrily calls someone named Hun Chuan, a beauty in the first scene. I'm sure this plot will be amazing. He harshly pushes open a door and confronts Chuan about not giving him the royalties. Inside the room, Chuan, who looks like a middle-aged man, is calmly sipping on his tea and tells the handsome man to calm down and sit so they can have a chat. His calm attitude doesn't affect the handsome man, who is still angry and shouts that they must give him royalties if they want to sell his comics to film and media companies. To strengthen his argument, the young man threatens not to recompose his work. Chuan reminds the young man, Fang Ge, that the contract he signed clearly states that all rights to his work belong to the company. Fang Ge's upset, realizing that the company will not agree to give him royalties for his work. He decides to leave, telling Chuan that he will see them in court. Chuan calls after him, saying he will not get any help, but Fang ignores him and leaves the room. Even though he is utterly disgusted by the company's behavior and acted tough in front of them, he is still worried about the situation. Fang cannot afford to hire a lawyer. Doing so means he will have to live on instant noodles. Seriously. What's with artists constantly struggling with this kind of story? He suddenly sees a bored notification of his comics turning into a movie, renewing his motivation to fight against the company, even if he has to eat noodles, without wasting any time. Fang visits a law firm and becomes disappointed when the woman there tells him it will be tough for them to win the case against the Silverfish Company. Fang is confused and asks them, if it is because of some imparity clause and default operation legal in the contract. The one explains to him that the contract clearly states that all rights to his work are in the hands of Silverfish. The company might invite the famous lawyer Chi Anmo to defend them, which will only make the situation worse for him. Fong knows that Chi Anmo is a gold lawyer who hardly loses a case. What disappoints him more is the fact that such a lawyer is helping an evil company, concluding that Chi Anmo must be evil after all. Fong plans to beat him up if he ever sees the man. Surprisingly, when he passes a cafe, he spots Chi Anmo sitting inside, calmly sipping his coffee. I'm excited for this first meeting. Let's go. Fong is furious at the lawyer for enjoying his time compared to him, who is in a tense situation. Without much thought, Fong barges inside the cafe. He calls Chi Anmo, and when the lawyer looks up, Fong throws the coffee at his face, shocking everyone, including himself. Oho. Our little cutie is very feisty. Chi Anmo gives him a death glare, which almost scares Fong. But instead of backing away, Fong decides to take a defensive stance. He shouts at Chi Anmo, confronting him about his low moral values for defending an evil company. Chi Anmo stares at him coldly and asks if he looks like someone who cares about his moral values. Fong angrily shouts at Chi Anmo, saying that he has never met a shameless lawyer like him and that his fame is not something so great. Chi An No remains calm as he replies that his fame is the reason why he is so successful, and Fang can't even afford his fees. I swear, when the other person in the argument is calm, it is the most infuriating thing. Chi An Mo continues to provoke Fang, asking how his fans will feel when they find out he signed an unfair contract. Hearing the bitter truth from Chi An Mo, Fang is caught off guard and admits that he was stupid to sign that contract. But Fong refuses to bend over and tries to project all this on Chi Anmo instead, saying he should have more conscience as a lawyer. Chi Anmo just chuckles in return and stands up, saying that such provocation will not work on him and that Fong should beg for forgiveness instead. Fong is dazed, seeing how tall the lawyer is. Chi Anmo says he will consider helping Fong if he apologizes and begs for it. Fong is just like me, forgetting all arguments when someone tall and handsome stands before me. Fang just grows agitated in return and says he will find another lawyer instead, not believing that Chi An Mo is his only choice. He then leaves from there, while Chi An Mo just stands there silently. The waiters who were watching the scene unfold in front of them are now worried about Chi An Mo's temper. They try to calm him by saying Fang is ignorant, and they all know Chi An Mo is a good lawyer. Chi An Mo just smirks in return and says that he is sure Fang Go will soon come and beg him. This lawyer sure has a rare taste. He's probably an S. Sometime later, Fong is sitting on a bench in the park, exhausted and worried about how he visited all the law firms in the city, unable to find a lawyer willing to help him. He gets more worried knowing that the hearing will take place in a month. He is forced to wonder if Chi Anmo is the only one who can truly help him. He quickly dismisses his idea, not wanting to see Chi Anmo's smug face when he goes back to him. 
He tries to comfort himself by thinking there is no guarantee that Chi Anmo will help him even when he goes and begs for his forgiveness. Even if his concerns are simply that, concerns, it doesn't change the fact that Fang Ge has no way of contacting the lawyer. Just when he is thinking about all this, his phone starts ringing, startling him badly. Fang is surprised to see the unknown number and picks up the call, only to find that it is Chi Anmo on the other end. Feels like their souls are already connected. Surprised, Fang Ge asks Chi Anmo how he found his number, but Chi Anmo dismisses the question, saying that the only important thing right now is Fang Ge's decision. Left with no other choice, the artist politely asks Chi Anmo if he will help him. The lawyer replies that he never goes back on what he said and will only help Fang Ge if he begs him. The statement infuriates Fang, but he buries his anger and begs Chi Anmo for help. Chi Anmo replies that he wants to hear it in person and hangs up the call. Fang is puzzled, but his confusion soon turns into shock when a car suddenly stops before him. Chi Anmo gets out of the vehicle and stands in front of Fang Ge, asking the artist to repeat his apology. Even though he can hardly control his anger, Fang manages to beg Chi Anmo for help, utterly embarrassed by the situation. Chi Anmo holds Fang Ge's chin with his fingers and forces him to look up. With a smug smile, Chi Anmo asks if the other can even afford his expensive fees. This angers Fang Ge, but he is completely surprised when Chi Anmo suddenly grabs his waist and pulls him closer. Their bodies are pressed together as Chi Anmo asks Fang Ge not to be angry, saying he still has something else to say. Fang is speechless when Chi Anmo tells him he can choose another payment method instead of money. Fast forward to how our little cutie can pay. Chi Anmo explains that his ex-boyfriend is hosting a banquet. As for the payment, he wants Fang Ge to attend the banquet with him as his partner. From the entire conversation, Fang is more shocked to find that Chi Anmo is gay. Even though he finds it really strange that Fang is more focused on that, Chi Anmo confirms that he is gay and asks Fang Ge about his sexuality. Fang quickly replies that he is not gay. Still, when he remembers a boy confessing his feelings for him, Fang becomes confused about his preferences. Chi Anmo is amused by this situation as he leans closer to Fang and suggests that he can help him figure out his sexuality. Chi Anmo is really sus. Fang quickly pushes Chi Anmo away from him, saying he doesn't need that. He changes the topic by agreeing to attend the banquet in return for getting help from Chi Anmo in his lawsuit. Not long after, the two attend the banquet together. Fang is surprised to see the giant villa in front of him. Fang just sits in the car, thinking how it feels like he doesn't belong in such a luxurious place. He comes out of his thoughts when Chi Anmo tells him to get out of his car. Sensing that Fang is nervous, Chi Anmo offers him his hand, assuring him they are together so Fang doesn't have to worry. The sweet action from the lawyer changes Fang's perception of him a little as he holds the hand extended toward him. They enter the hall together, instantly starting the whispers around the hall. Fang hears someone talking about how Chi Anmo brought another man after a small argument with Bo Wen. Fang is surprised to find that Bo Wen is Chi Anmo's ex, but before he can ask something about it, Bo Wen approaches them. Chi Anmo grips Fang's hand as he greets his ex-boyfriend. Chi Anmo introduces them to each other as he pulls Fang closer by his waist, making him the direct target of Bo Wen's furious glares. I can already tell that this person will create problems in the future. He looks petty, feeling really awkward about the situation. Fang tries to be friendly and raises his hand to greet Bo Wen. As expected, Bo Wen ignores his hand and instead tells Chi Anmo how his taste changed after they broke up. Chi Anmo rests his chin on Fang's shoulder and replies that his taste has indeed changed. Chi Anmo claims that he now prefers the cute and sweet type. Fang is embarrassed by all the touching but decides to endure it for the sake of the lawsuit. Suddenly, Fang's stomach growls out loud, causing him to get more embarrassed. Chi Anmo just pats his head softly, asks him to stay there while he goes and brings him some food. Fang innocently accepts the order while internally seething with anger. He stops glaring at Chi Anmo's back when Bo Wen calls him and asks if he really thinks Chi Anmo likes him. Bo Wen sharply asks Fang Ge if he has been dating Chi Anmo for over a month now. Fang nervously takes a step back as he answers that it is almost a month now. Fang is more shocked when Bo Wen suggestively asks him where Chi Anmo likes to do it the most. He starts thinking about how he can know this distinctive information. Oblivious to his thoughts, Bo Wen continues that he has been dating Chi Anmo since they were in university. Even though they have fought and gotten back together many times, there's no way a nobody can just ruin their relationship. Fang is angry at being called nobody but doesn't say anything in reply. 
Bo Wen threatens Fong, who just can't understand the hostile behavior he is facing from Chi Anmo's ex. Bo Wen's attitude instantly changes as he politely smiles at Chi Anmo, who has returned. Chi Anmo gives Fong his favorite chocolate dessert, which he happily starts to eat. He has to stop when he notices Bo Wen's cold stares and quickly hides behind Chi Anmo. Just then, a man approaches Bo Wen and asks him for a dance. He looks back at Chi Anmo and is angry when he sees the lawyer entirely focused on Fong. Sorry, Bo Wen. Our little artist has that charm. Bo Wen finally leaves while Fong tells Chi Anmo that his ex was looking at him before leaving. He is surprised when Chi Anmo says that he is aware of the looks. So Fong asks why Chi Anmo didn't stop Bo Wen. Chi Anmo just coldly replies that he broke up with Bo Wen a long time ago. Fong silently looks down at the desert, thinking that it seems like the couple has gone through a bad breakup. He comes out of his thoughts when Chi Anmo asks him why he looks confident in front of him and doesn't do anything when Bo Wen is bullying him. Fang sheepishly replies that he doesn't want to get in any trouble when he is just pretending to be Chi Anmo's significant other. He is happy that Chi Anmo bought his excuse, not wanting the lawyer to know that he was actually just pretending to be bold in front of him. Fang quickly excuses himself for the bathroom and leaves. Chi Anmo is left standing there, surprised at how Fang looked comfortable in that bizarre situation. He keeps thinking about how Fang has an innocent face that makes people want to love him. Deep in his thoughts, Chi Anmo is calmly sipping on his drink, oblivious to how Bo Wen stares at him, determined not to let Chi Anmo go to someone else. After washing, Fang comes out of the bathroom with automatic doors. He thinks about how it will give him so much drawing material if he can take pictures of that luxurious toilet. Funny how others are plotting against him while here he is, completely focused on other things. He stops in his tracks when he notices Chi Anmo and Bo Wen standing very close to each other. Fong is startled when he sees Bo Wen leaning closer to Chi Anmo, and his first thought is that they are trying to get back together. In the hall, Chi Anmo pushes Bo Wen away from him, warning him to stay away. Bo Wen is shocked by this and shares how he wishes to get back together with Chi Anmo. Just then, he notices Fong listening to their conversation and asks Chi Anmo if he really needs to insult him like that. Despite the accusation, Chi Anmo calmly replies that he is not offending anyone and wants Bo Wen to stay away so his lover cannot get the wrong idea about them. Fang is annoying to be part of the conversation and just wants to sneak away. But it doesn't work as Chi Anmo gestures for him to come closer. He is angry at the gesture for a moment but quickly gives up resistance when Chi Anmo threatens him about the lawsuit. Fang Gus slowly walks to them and Chi Anmo quickly attaches himself to Fang's back. Fang wants to say something to Chi Anmo for being clingy, but stops when he notices that Chi Anmo's face is really pink. He thinks that the other must be sick, but Chi Anmo figures out that someone must have spiked his drink. Chi Anmo asks Fang to help him get out of there. Despite his condition, Chi Anmo manages to drive a few miles and tells Fang that this is as far as he can go. He tells Fang to get back using a cab, but Fang is still worried and stares at Chi Anmo. Fong tries to touch Chi Anmo's forehead, asking if he is sick, but Chi Anmo slaps his hands away and rudely tells him to get out of the car. Fong is momentarily speechless but then angrily shouts at Chi Anmo about how he doesn't need to care about him. He gets scared when Chi Anmo glares at him and quickly makes an excuse that he is worried about his lawsuit if something happens to his lawyer. His statement seems to give Chi Anmo an idea, as he smirks and asks Fong if he will do anything as long as he wins his case. Someone please save innocent Fong from this cunning lawyer. Fong is slightly surprised to hear that Chi Anmo wants something else, even though he already joined him at the banquet. Before Fong can get any answer, Chi Anmo pushes back his seat and leans over him. Chi Anmo then says that going to the banquet is not enough as payment. Chi Anmo adds how Fong cannot object. Fong is shocked as Chi Anmo starts to explore every part of him. He just lies there with his abs on display silently accepting that he cannot escape this situation now. Now then, go ahead and use your imagination for the rest of the scene. Clothes lay askew on the floor of the bedroom. When Fong wakes up, he realizes he feels hurt and sore in certain places. He doesn't understand the situation at first, but then he realizes that he is basically in his birth suit under the sheets. A vivid image of Shi Anmo comes to his mind, confirming his suspicions that he indeed did it with his lawyer last night. Fong is totally devastated by the situation and is throwing a small tantrum when he notices a paper on the side table. He quickly picks it up, only to find that it is a note from Chi Anmo, who asked him to rest, assuring him that he would take care of his lawsuit. 
Fong is furious by the situation of this payment. He doesn't want to use his body, no matter how desperate he is. He keeps thinking about how Chi Anmo must look down on him, and his hatred for the lawyer ignites. With only a day left before the trial, Fong has spent the previous days completely locked in his apartment playing video games. He takes a short break to eat something and regretfully thinks about how he shouldn't be impulsive. Just then, his phone starts ringing, indicating a call from someone named Ren Jia. He picks up the call and keeps it away from his ear when the woman from the other end shouts at him for not telling her about what the company did to him. When the other stops ranting, Fan politely asks her how she knows about it when she is studying abroad. Ren Jia replies that she found it through social media, where his fans are running campaigns for him. She scolds him for changing the topic and asks if he wants her help finding a suitable lawyer for his lawsuit. Fong is still a little scared as he tells her that he has already found a lawyer. Ren Ji Yat is still worried about him, for she knows that the company is very cunning, especially when copyright is involved. Despite his ill feelings toward Chi Anmo, Fong assures Ren that the person he found for the lawsuit has a high winning streak. Ren finally calms down and tells him to inform her about the lawsuit's results, for she cannot travel back yet. She then hangs up the call but still worries that Fong is being cheated, not understanding how a person like him can afford a good lawyer. Just then, a girl comes from behind and hugs her, asking Ren why she is in a bad mood. Oh, a second couple. I will happily accept as many cute couples as the writer will give us. Ren replies that her friend got into a problem and she has to return home early. The one is unhappy with how Ren has to return and asks if this is a special friend. Ren pushes her away at the question saying that it is her personal matter, which she cannot share with her. Meanwhile, Fang is lying in bed as he goes through social media accounts and is happy to see the majority of his fans supporting him. He suddenly remembers how Chi Anmo didn't contact him after that day and is worried if the lawyer will even keep his promise. He thinks about contacting Chi Anmo, but before he can go through with that plan, he falls asleep. The following day, Fang wakes up to the ringing of his doorbell and is startled to see that he has overslept. He starts to panic when he realizes that his trial is in an hour. Fong slowly gets up to open the door, irritated by a guest coming at such a crucial time. He is surprised to see Chi Anmo at the door and instantly asks why he is there. Chi Anmo replies that he came to pick up his client and voices his suspicion that Fong has forgotten about the lawsuit. Fong quickly defends himself, denying the allegation from the lawyer as his face heats up due to embarrassment. Suddenly, Chi Anmo grabs his chin asking him if he is still dressed that way because he knows that Chi Anmo is coming to pick him up. It seems like Chi Anmo is taking advantage of Fong, but we can't really be angry with this handsome lawyer. Fong is flustered by the action as he slaps Chi Anmo's hand away, quickly explaining that he just overslept a little. He tells Chi Anmo to wait for him as he gets changed and slams his door shut. Fong Ga leans against the door, thinking about how his chin feels hot due to Chi Anmo's touch. The situation gives him some very graphic memories from his night with the lawyer, which he desperately tries to forget. After the hearing, Fong is impressed by Chi Anmo's talent in court despite his stubborn personality in the outside world. While walking out with Chi Anmo, he reminisces about how it felt really great when Chuan got embarrassed in court. Before they can go further, Chuan comes running and offers Chi Anmo to pay double whatever Fong is paying him if he joins him instead. Of oh, this old man with his infuriating face. Fang is shocked at the old man's audacity and calls him out for bribing the lawyer in front of the court. Chuan is not bothered by him, as he replies that he is doing this because he can afford it. Chuan continues that a person like Fang cannot compete with him, reminding the little artist that he, Chuan himself, was the one who helped him get out of poverty. Chuan's harsh words hit Fang hard, and he just stood there dejectedly, not noticing Chi Anmo's sharp stare at him. Chuan soon walks away while Chi Anmo asks Fang why he still looks sad even though he has already rejected Chuan's offer. Fang keeps looking down sadly as he asks Chi Anmo if he wants to know about what Chuan just said. Chi Anmo replies that there is nothing for him to ask and Chuan is just being a fool. Fang politely says that Chuan actually helped him back then and he decides to share his story. He tells Chi Anmo that a few years ago, he ran away from his house empty-handed after a fight with his parents. At that time, Chuan gave him his first salary, and if things hadn't gotten terrible, Fang wouldn't have had to end their relationship on bad terms. Upon hearing this, Chi Anmo stops in his tracks and softly rubs Fang's head, telling him how he has a substantial following on social media and will easily find a new publisher. Chi Anmo cannot help but notice how Fang's hair is very soft, just like his heart. I can already feel the love blooming.
Fawn pushes Shi Anmo's hand away, replying that he never thought about that, but now it is time for him to think about it carefully. He instantly starts thinking about what other company he can join. Shi Anmo starts the conversation again, mentioning the night they had spent together. Still, Fang immediately stops him, claiming he doesn't remember anything from that night. He on Mo agrees not to mention it again if Fang doesn't want it and says that he still needs Fang's help for something. He tells Fang how Bo Wen doesn't believe that he is in a relationship with Fang and keeps bothering him these days. Shi on Mo continues that Chuan is also very petty and will keep bothering Fang if he stays here, so he should join him on a trip to Bali. Fang sharply asks if Chi Anmo wants to use him to get rid of the trouble. Chi Anmo quickly replies that he is not heartless and that during the trip, he will pay for everything so Fang can relax and enjoy. Fang replies that despite the intriguing offer, he cannot accept it because he still has work. Fang Gu moves to leave, thinking about how Chi Anmo's happy attitude makes him feel like he is taking advantage of the lawyer. But before Fang can do so, Chi Anmo stops him by holding his hand and requests that Fang at least join him for a meal. Chi An Mo blushes a little, asking Fang to take it as his reward for rejecting Chu An's bribe. Fang is surprised when, instead of taking him to a cafe, Chi An Mo brings him to a bar. He looks around carefully and figures that it must be a gay bar because all the couples there are men. Chi An Mo quickly defends himself, saying that he brought Fang here because he thinks that the food and environment in that place are excellent. Chi An Mo then chooses a drink, and Fang also makes peace with the situation not wanting to change places again. Before they can order food, they are distracted by this sudden shouting. They quickly look back to find an old man holding his son by the collar and yelling at him for bringing shame to his name. The scene sends Fong back to his past, remembering his father yelling at him. He remembers his mother telling him to focus on his studies instead of other things, and he couldn't understand why his parents suddenly changed their supportive attitude toward him. To think that our innocent Fong must go through those things at a young age. Chi An Mo is carefully observing Fang and happy with how his expressions are worse than before. Just then, a waiter serves them food and drinks. Chi An Mo tries to warn Fang about strong drinks, but Fang just gulps down the glass in one go. He puts the glass down with his now red face and talks about how it tastes like orange juice. Chi An Mo silently observes him, easily figuring out that the argument a witness has upset Fang. Before he can dwell on it further, Fang starts speaking. Fang reveals how his best friend confessed to him when he was in his third year of high school. At that time, Fang didn't understand his feelings and wanted to discuss them with his parents. He was shocked when, instead of supporting him, his parents put all the blame on his friend Kong Yun. This forced his friend to drop out of school. Fang's eyes fill with tears, remembering all this as he thinks it was all his fault. Chi An Mo instantly goes to his side and softly pats his head, comforting him by saying how it is all over now. Chi An Mo asks Fang if it will make him happy if he shares something more depressing from his life. Fang is confused by the strange statement, as Chi An Mo says that he should be pleased that his parents care for him in their own way, unlike his mother, who once tried to kill him. There is a loud bump when Fang wakes up the following day. He apparently fell to the ground while sleeping, and his face hurt from the fall. It makes him realize that everything from last night wasn't a dream. He instantly forgets his pain when he looks around and sees the ocean from the window. Shocked, is trying to understand the situation when Chi Anmo comes there and asks him if he is this excited because they are in Bali. Waking up at a holiday destination would feel like a dream for anyone. Fang is dumbfounded by the situation as he confronts Chi Anmo about taking advantage of him when he is drunk. Suddenly remembering something, he asks Chi Anmo how he brought him here without a passport. Fang quickly walks backward as Chi Anmo approaches him, making him fall on the bed. Chi Anmo takes out his phone saying that he recorded Fong last night as proof, and throws his phone at Fong, asking him to see for himself how he agreed to come to Bali. Fong stares at the screen, shocked as he sees himself crying and apologizing to Chi Anmo for going against him when his life is so miserable. Chi Anmo had again asked him to come to Bali, to which he happily agreed in his drunken state. Fong is wholly devastated at his point as Chi Anmo tells him that Fong brought him to his house last night so they could get his passport. Fang angrily punches Chi An Mo while thinking about how this story must have been a lie, so he shouldn't feel sorry for him. Chi An Mo throws his arm over Fang's shoulder, asking him not to be angry. Instead, Fang should take this as an opportunity to get inspiration for his art. Chi An Mo is satisfied when he notices that Fang is convinced by his argument and quickly starts talking about how there are a lot of attractions in Bali. 
Fang agrees to enjoy the vacation but announces that he will do it on three conditions. He stands up and tells Chi An Mo he can't touch him without permission. Chi An Mo agrees to get his consent first, as Fang warns him not to touch him all the time. He then walks away when Chi An Mo stops him, asking for the other two conditions, but Fang just says that he will tell them later and quickly leaves the room. When Fang turns to leave again, Chi An Mo notices the marks left on the other little artist Nate last night. Still, he is not worried about that because he touched Fang before he imposed those conditions. Lawyers and their loopholes. Later, they explore the city, and Fang is amazed by the unique architecture. He's really excited and runs around to take as many pictures as he can. While Fang is busy gathering inspiration for his art, Chi An Mo keeps staring at Fang's behind. Thinking about how smooth the shape is, control yourself, Chi An Mo. We know our Fang is breathtaking, but PDA is not appreciated. Looking at it makes Chi An Mo want to touch Fang, and he regrets not touching Fang more when he was drunk the other night. His attention is suddenly diverted when his phone buzzes in his pocket. Meanwhile, Fang is finally satisfied with the number of pictures he took and turns around to inform Chi An Mo about them. When he glances at Chi An Mo, he is mesmerized by the lawyer's crazy good looks. He is disappointed in himself for not noticing this first and keeps thinking about how Chi An Mo would be very popular if he appeared in a manga. Fang takes a picture of Chi An Mo but is startled when the other catches him in the act. Take a picture, for it lasts longer. Fang really is taking the saying literally. Fang quickly turns around, trying to find a way to escape this situation, as he is sure Chi An Mo will make fun of him. He can't escape in time as Chi An Mo gets closer and hooks an arm around his shoulder, ready to inquire about the picture. Chi An Mo starts to say something to Fang but stops suddenly when he notices someone else taking their pictures. Fang is confused by the sudden change of behavior and is more surprised when Chi An Mo starts to drag him in the opposite direction of the exit. Chi An Mo stops before a man holding a camera and asks him whose picture he took just now. The man calmly introduces himself as Ivan and tells them he is a photographer. Chi An Mo sharply replies that he is not interested in him and just wants to know about the picture he took just now. Ivan sheepishly shows them the picture he took just now in which Chi An Mo has his arm around Fang's shoulder as they look at each other. Ivan says Fang is very beautiful, and seeing the two together is also very attractive, so he couldn't help but capture the moment. Fang is frantic to hear that and hurriedly tries to say they are not partners, but Chi An Mo stops him, threatening to kiss him if he keeps the act going. They are interrupted by Ivan, who asks them if he can keep their picture, but Chi An Mo instantly denies the request. Ivan argues that he is asking Fang, as he is also in the picture, but Chi An Mo sharply replies that it is also his decision and asks Ivan to delete the image. Fang is confused by Chi An Mo's behavior over a simple picture. He decides to jump into the situation and politely asks Ivan to delete the photo, saying that he even rarely takes pictures of himself as he is not very photogenic. Ivan seems very triggered as he talks about how Fang is very beautiful, claiming he is his muse. Uh, oh, is this the appearance of a new rival? At this point, Chi An Mo is losing his patience, as he sharply tells Ivan to delete the picture and respect their privacy. Ivan agrees to delete the image and turns toward his camera as Fang takes a peek at him from his hiding place behind Chi An Mo. Fang is thinking about how weird that person is when Ivan seems to notice his stare and asks if he wants to confirm that he deleted the picture. Before he can reply, Chi An Mo says they still have a lot of sightseeing to do and leads Fang away, telling Ivan that he hopes they don't meet again. As they leave, Ivan looks at a different picture of Fong in his camera and claims he will meet them again soon. A stalker. Just what we needed during this season. Meanwhile, as the two walk away, Fong asks Chi An Mo why he was so hard on Ivan when the picture he captured was good. Chi An Mo face palms at Fong's stupidity and asks him how he cannot notice Ivan's evil intentions toward him. Fong is taken aback by this claim, saying how it is unlikely that they only meet gay people even when they are in another country. He then continues that he is just an ordinary straight person, so it is impossible for another gay guy to like him. Aha! Uh -huh. You're forgetting the existence of Kong Yuan and the guy before you right now. His grant stops when Shi Anmo suddenly holds his hand and says how Fang is oblivious to his charm. Fang is embarrassed and tries to deny it, but Shi Anmo takes another approach and asks him if he has never been praised for his looks in the past. Fang thinks about it hard and replies that it happened to him in the past, but ever since he started drawing, he hardly ever went out. Fang quickly says that it doesn't mean anything and asks Chi An Mo if all the gay guys are this shallow. Chi An Mo decides to drop the topic, not wanting to discuss other guys with Fang anymore. Chi An Mo continues that it doesn't matter that Ivan took good pictures, 
His skills still don't match Fong's. Fong is surprised that Chi Anmo remembers the picture even after the incident and quickly walks away. Chi Anmo shouts at him to send him a copy of the picture, but Fong argues that he only took photos of the scenery. Chi Anmo still doesn't back down, as he asks to check his phone instead, but Fong refuses to hand over his mobile. After sightseeing, they sit in a cafe eating their desserts, and Fong keeps on yawning. Chi Anmo notices this and asks him if he didn't sleep well the night before. Fong simply replies that he is used to staying up late while thinking about how it was because of being in the same place as Chi Anmo. Not for the reason you all are thinking. Last night, Fong feared that Chi Anmo would come barging into his room. Hence, he spent most of his nights staring at the door. He keeps thinking about whether Chi Anmo went out at some point last night while absent-mindedly gazing at the lawyer. Chi Anmo notices his stare and asks if he wants to try the dessert. He doesn't give Fong any choice as he shoves the pudding just when he opens his mouth to say no. Chi Anmo asks Fong's opinion on his pudding and is amused when he complains about its lack of sugar. Chi Anmo is smiling at the fact that Fong is addicted to sweets when someone comes from behind and comments that it is rare to see Chi Anmo this happy. Chi Anmo quickly stands up, addressing the newcomer as an uncle, surprising Fong that he came to the place where his family is, petitioned to have such a handsome uncle so we can inherit the good genes. The man tells them not to be so formal and to sit down, and he also joins them at the table. Chi Anmo asks his uncle if he has nothing else to do because he showed up so quickly, to which the man replies that they are all trivial matters. He instead talks about how Chi Anmo had told him a long time ago that he would bring someone with him, so he had to rush there. Fong just smiles awkwardly at the situation while thinking of Chi Anmo informing his uncle about this before. The man then purposely provokes Chi Anmo, asking him if the Zhengs are capable of fostering such a child. For those confused, Shi Anmo's ex is from the Zhang family. Shi Anmo is irritated by this statement as he reminds his uncle that he broke up with Bo Wen years ago. The man still doesn't leave the topic and asks Shi Anmo how Bo Wen let him go, as he's a very petty person. Shi Anmo stops his uncle from talking further on the subject, saying they didn't come there to discuss that. He finally introduces them, formally telling Fong that this person is his uncle, Shi An Yan. Yan tells Fong to just call him uncle, as Chi Anmo introduces Fong Ga as his boyfriend. Chi Anmo is annoyed when his uncle praises how polite Fong is and asks his uncle to keep his fantasies to himself. He then turns toward Fong and informs him that he must go somewhere with his uncle. He advises Fong to stay there and not run around. Fong is irritated by Chi Anmo treating him like a child but accepts the advice, losing to the handsome face of the other. After they leave, Fong sits there on his own thinking about how Chi Anmo originally planned to bring Bo Wen there first. He comes out of his thoughts when a man suddenly approaches him. Fong recognizes the man as the photographer from before and is speechless when Ivan suddenly holds his hand, introducing himself again. Fong awkwardly smiles and pulls his hand away, quickly shifting to the other end of the booth. Fong can't understand if all the foreigners are this bold, and his uneasiness grows when Ivan sits beside him. Ivan breaks the silence as he asks Fong about Chi Anmo to which Fong sheepishly replies that Chi Anmo has something else to do. Ivan suddenly caresses his cheek, asking him if he hadn't slept well the night before, seeing that there are dark circles under his eyes. Oh, his touch seems as creepy as his face. Fong is shocked by his audacity and slaps his hands away, not understanding what the photographer is trying to do. In his irritation, he pushes Ivan away, making the photographer fall down from the seat. Fong quickly stands up and rushes to help Ivan apologizing for his behavior. He explains that he gets scared when people get close to him, but Ivan is not phased as he accepts that it is his mistake. Fong asks him if he is all right, but instead of replying to his question, Ivan says he is there because he accidentally saw something last night. Fong is confused by the strange statement and it just grows when Ivan holds his hand again. Ivan then takes out a picture, saying that even though it makes him look nosy, Fong has the right to see it. Fong is shocked to see Chi Anmo hugging Bo Wen in the picture and figures out that the timestamp matches the time Chi Anmo was outside last night. He is now sure that Chi Anmo went out last night to meet his ex, and Fong is furious for getting dragged into the middle of this. Ivan looks at him pitifully and apologizes for the situation, saying he knows that the Chinese are very loyal to their partners. Fong just keeps thinking about how he doesn't want to be in a relationship with that playboy. Ivan doesn't back down as he pats Fong's head saying it is good he found out early. Just then, Chi Anmo returns, clearly unhappy with the scene before him. He quickly approaches the table, asking Ivan why he is there when he clearly warned him before not to follow them. 
Ivan coldly replies that Chi Anmo can't stop him from being friends with Fang, even if they are in a relationship. Chi Anmo is furious, but Ivan continues, saying Chi Anmo has the right to hate him, and then takes his leave. Before leaving, he whispers to Fang to talk to Chi Anmo and politely bids him goodbye. This guy is really sowing discord between the two. Chi Anmo softly caresses Fang's cheek and asks what Ivan told him to make him look so sad. My poor heart can't bear this sweet display of affection. To his surprise, Fong squats his hand away and asks him not to touch him. Fong continues that he doesn't want to extend their trip to Bali anymore and inquires when they can go back. Chi Anmo is confused and firmly says that he wants to know the reason for Fong's sudden change of mood. Fong angrily crumples the picture he's holding as he replies that he is being forced to stay there. He decides to face the situation and confronts Chi Anmo for meeting Bo Wen last night. Chi Anmo is momentarily confused by how Fang knows about that but figures out that the photographer must have told him. Fang continues that even though Chi Anmo acts like he is bothered by Bo Wen, it seems like he is happy to be in that situation. Chi Anmo is surprised by Fang's sudden rage and tells him to stay calm. Chi Anmo tries to explain his situation, but Fang stops him, saying that he doesn't want to listen to any explanation and that he hates being cheated the most. Fong intends to leave the place, but Chi Anmo quickly grabs his wrists, stopping him from going. He asks Fong if he even knows his way around the city and repeats that things are not how he thinks. Chi Anmo seems amused by the intense reaction and asks Fong if he is perhaps jealous. The statement only infuriates Fong more as he sharply replies that he has no reason to be jealous and just feels pity for Bo Wen, who is in love with someone like Chi Anmo. Fong then asks Chi Anmo why he doesn't cherish Bo Wen who even came to Bali to chase him. Chi Anmo just stares at him coldly, holding his wrist. With a sigh, he walks away without saying anything else. The strange reaction makes Fang wonder if he did something wrong. First couples fight. The next day, Chi Anmo meets his uncle Yan as they relax near the beach. Yan asks him about Fang, inquiring if they are fighting. Still, Chi Anmo stops him from asking more questions, saying he's already worked up. Yan instead asks him about Bo Wen, who chased him to Bali, but Chi Anmo gets angry and tells his uncle not to mention that disgusting name. Yan says they can talk about Fong instead and asks if Chi Anmo's little babe is jealous of the situation. Chi Anmo is irritated as he replies that Fong is not jealous. Instead, Fong believes that Chi Anmo cheated on him and won't listen to any kind of explanation. While listening to the situation, Yan says that Chi Anmo still can't leave Fong in the hotel like that and excitedly says he will give his nephew some fantastic ideas. At the hotel, Fong wakes up and slowly looks around, only to find that Chi Anmo was not there. He starts searching the whole place for food but can't find anything to satisfy his hunger. Fong just lies on the floor, tiredly, thinking about how Chi Anmo is very mean and didn't leave him any food. We understand Fong. Food is life, after all. Fong sits there, slowly drawing patterns on the floor while recalling how Chi Anmo is not talking to him nor agreeing to send him back. Just then, he notices a phone a wallet, and a piece of paper on the table. He quickly picks it up and reads the note. In the note, Chi Anmo informed him that it was his phone and that he could also use the money in the wallet. Fong is touched by the fact that Chi Anmo remembers him not having international roaming. Fong happily gets out to buy himself some food, satisfied that Chi Anmo at least has some morals. After some time, Chi Anmo comes back to the hotel, dressed up and holding a big bouquet of roses, just as instructed by his uncle. Initially nervous, he gathers the courage to enter the room, only to find that Fong is not there. He is glad that he has at least given Fong a phone. Chi Anmo tries to call Fong, but is surprised that the number is not in service. His first thought is that something must be wrong with the mobile, and he decides to call his uncle's phone instead. He dials the number, but doesn't get to talk to his uncle as someone enters the room. Someone picks up the call from the other end. But Chi Anmo has already placed the mobile on the table as he turns toward Bo Wen. Shi Anmo angrily tells his ex that he shouldn't have come there as he is not welcome. Bo Wen argues back that he knows he is wrong. He explains how if he had known that she was approaching him for the inheritance, then he wouldn't have helped her. Bo Wen gets closer to Shi Anmo, saying he will never contact Aunt Jo again. Before he can say anything else, Shi Anmo interrupts him, saying he is busy. He adds that using that woman as an excuse disgusts him. Bo Wen is also furious as he points at the roses, Asking if Chi Anmo's being busy refers to giving those flowers to that artist. He shouts, asking Chi Anmo what is so great about Fang, as he just acts innocent and flirts with everyone. 
Chi Anmo is confused by the statement as Bo Wen shouts that Chi Anmo will never be able to see Fawn again if he doesn't get back together with him. What the? Did he have someone kidnap our little Fawn? In the meantime, Fong is with Ivan as they both walk inside a park. Fong stops suddenly and asks Ivan how far the coffee shop is because it has been a while since they started walking. Oh, oh, this cutie of ours is so naive. Ivan replies that they will reach there soon and says that if Fong is tired, he can eat some pastry later and rest for a while. Fong tries to say something, but Ivan cuts him off, saying he will forget his troubles once he tastes those pastries. Ivan continues to say that Fawn needs to rest so he can have more energy while confronting his partner. Nope, Fawn doesn't need that kind of advice. So please but I've already. Ivan. Fawn leans back a little, uncomfortable with how close Ivan is to him. Ivan notices his reaction and quickly apologizes, saying he forgot Fawn hates it when people get close to him. Fawn is deep in his thoughts as he can't help but feel that all this is happening because Chi Anmo insists on them being fake boyfriends. He remembers how earlier Ivan told him that he saw Bo Wen going into the hotel that Fong is currently staying in. All this confusing situation irritates Fong a lot, and he can't help but compare his life to some cliché novel stories. His thoughts suddenly turn toward Ivan, as he couldn't understand why they kept bumping into each other so often. Uh, oh, you need to be taught about red flags, little Fong. After some time, they finally reach the cafe that Ivan mentioned, and Fong is instantly mesmerized by the interior. He quickly takes out his phone to take a picture of this fantastic inspirational material. At the same time, Ivan explains more things about the cafe to him. Fong is surprised when Ivan catches him taking pictures and quickly hides his phone, pretending he isn't doing anything. Just then, he notices a little kid standing there is confused about how he got there. Ivan also sees the kid, turns toward the manager, and speaks to him in a different language. Ivan asks Charlie, the manager, why he didn't lock up the kid when he told them to keep a close eye on him. The manager argues back that the kid, Parker, has been very polite lately and they can't keep him locked up. Fong stares at Ivan, not understanding the conversation before him. Just then, the kid approaches him. But when he tries to politely greet the kid, the child squats Fong's hand away, cursing him. Fong is shocked at the kid's behavior as Ivan approaches them after hearing them interact. Ivan quickly turns to the kid, coldly telling him how he needs to get disciplined. Fong is confused by the situation and tells Ivan not to pick on the kid. Ivan instantly changes his demeanor, assuring Fong that he will only give the kid some verbal lessons. Ivan then stares at the kid coldly, warning Fong not to get close to him, saying that the kid is rude and violent. Ivan then quickly turns toward Fong with a smile, asking him if he is hungry and promptly orders the chef to prepare tea for them. Fong is confused as he keeps thinking about who this kid is to Ivan, observing how the two look like sworn enemies. Ivan offers Fong a cake as they sit together at a table, saying he baked them himself this morning. Fong thanks him but can't stop getting this inkling that Ivan already knew he would come there today. I swear Fong is blind when it comes to red flags. Fong looks at the chocolate mousse cake before him and is reminded of Chi An Mo again. Curious about his situation with Bo Wen, he comes out of his thoughts when Parker suddenly jumps on the table, sending all their drinks and desserts to the ground. Fong is shocked by the action, thinking that the child hates him. He quickly changes his attitude when he notices Ivan is ready to scold the child. I feel like cursing when I see Ivan's face. Fong stops Ivan by reasoning out that Parker is just a kid, thinking to himself that being cute is enough for the kid to get exempted. Ivan instantly controls his anger, announcing that he will not do anything if Fong is okay with the situation. Ivan stands up, saying he will check if some ingredients are left to make desserts. Fong stops Ivan from doing so, saying that he will go soon. Ivan instantly looks sad, claiming that his hospitality isn't good. Seeing this, Fong agrees to stay there for a while. Ivan thanks him for his gesture, saying he will tell Charlie to show him around. At his statement, Parker coldly stares at him again, but he just leaves after glaring at him. Fong turns toward Parker, offering to take him to the bathroom to clean his hands. Parker agrees to join him but quickly hides behind Fong when Charlie approaches them. Charlie says he will show him around, but Fong asks him about the toilet instead, explaining that he wants to help Parker clean up. Charlie agrees to help them, but when he is distracted a little, Parker quickly drags Fong away to the basement. Fong is confused but figures out that the kid is trying to show him something. Fong can't help but wonder if Ivan is doing some shady business in the basement. He then looks inside the room Parker is pointing toward and is shocked to see it filled with his pictures. Big red flag. Please realize it for what it is, Fong. 
Fong is utterly devastated to see his pictures like that and can't understand if it was Ivan or someone else who took these pictures. Before he can dwell on that further, Parker tugs at his hand again, asking him to escape quickly. Fong realizes they must leave that place first, but Ivan appears before they can. Ivan picks up Parker by his collar, making him dangle in the air. Fong angrily shouts at Ivan to put the boy down. Ivan is not phased by his shouting and instead calls Fonga his muse. He then tells Fong not to stare at him like that, as it just allures him more. Ivan suddenly tosses the kid away, worrying Fong, who instantly goes to ask Parker if he's okay. But Ivan stops him. Ivan holds his face in his hand, asking Fong if he likes his pictures, as they are all full of his love. Fong harshly pushes him away, calling him a stalker, but Ivan pulls him back again. Ivan then slams Fong on the wall and pins him, saying how he can't push him away. The stalker claims that Fong's anger just attracts him more. Fong is scared and asks Ivan to let him go, but the other refuses. Ivan claims he doesn't want to use force, but since Fong is not obedient, he wants to teach him a lesson. This guy is pissing me off. I wish I could just jump in and teach this guy a lesson. Fong is already scared and wishes for someone to save him. Just then, the young boy throws something to the light above them, and Fong uses the distraction to bite Ivan hard on the hand. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Chi An Mo is on a call with his uncle and asks him if he can find out the location of Fong's mobile. But Wen is lying on the floor, with his wrists tied up, as Chi An Mo talks to his uncle. Yan informs him about the phone's location, which is a cafe. He adds that he will send some people with Chi An Mo because the people at the cafe might be dangerous. Chi An Mo rushes out of the hotel while wishing for Fong to be safe because he was the one who got him into that situation. He is willing to let Fong do anything to him as punishment once he finds him. Ivan is furious as he stands in the room with his hand bleeding, and he looks around for Fong. Parker and Fong are discreetly trying to escape at first, and they start to run once they are in the corridor. Fong is worried about getting caught, and in his rush to escape, he slips on the floor. Parker quickly helps him, but Fong's knee is bleeding due to the fall, and he can't stand up. Parker takes action, hooking Fong's arm around his shoulder and helping him get up. Fong is surprised by the young boy's strength, as he just thought of him as a stupid kid. Woo. Good thing we are a little superhero. They are still in the corridor when they hear Ivan coming near them. Fong quickly tells the Parker to escape and gives him his phone, asking him to call someone for help. Parker tries to protest, but Fong convinces him to run. After Parker leaves, Fong decides he can't keep sitting here, even though his leg hurts badly. Fong considers buying some time before Chi An Mo can come to save him. Just then, Ivan appears, saying how Fong only spent a few minutes with Parker, but he has already learned how to anger him. He holds Fong's chin in his hand, asking him if he realized his mistakes and if he will not run anymore. Fong quickly stumbles back, wanting to escape Ivan, but only exposing his injuries in the process. The wounds anger Ivan more as he forcefully grabs Fong's leg, asking him how he can get hurt without his permission. Persistent Bitard, Fong doesn't need your permission for anything. Fong angrily shouts that whatever happens to him shouldn't confound Ivan at all. Ivan pushes Fong against the wall again, saying that it seems like he has no idea about the situation he is in. He continues that Fong has angered the young master of Jung's family, and he has left Fong to Ivan. So now he can't escape. Ivan menacingly adds that Fong's friends and family will soon hear the news of him dying in some accident in Bali. Fong is utterly shocked and says this is illegal, but Ivan only continues mocking him. He starts to lean closer to Fong, but before he can do more, Chi An Mo arrives. With a death glare, he yells at Ivan that he can't touch Fong with his dirty hands. Finally, Chi An Mo punches Ivan hard in the face, saying Ivan has a unique talent for making Chi An Mo hit someone after a long time. Looks like the exceptional talent of this stalker. Ivan just calmly wipes his wound, saying it's a pleasure. His statement infuriates Chi An Mo, but Fong stops him before he can do more. Fong reminds Chi An Mo that they are in a foreign country and that beating Ivan up will only cause trouble. Chi An Mo tells Fong to relax, saying that he is not a nice person to let Ivan go with just a beating. Suddenly, Chi An Mo notices that Fong is injured and rushes to ask him if he is all right. Fong replies that it only hurts a little and is startled when Chi An Mo presses hard on his wounds. He lies down on the floor due to the pain, and Chi An Mo says that the pain should remind him not to follow strangers blindly, and he's treating Fong like a kid again. Chi An Mo continues that he is so worried that something terrible happened to Fong and suddenly hugs him while thinking about his fear of losing Fong. The sudden action makes Fong blush, 
and he softly pats Chi Anmo's back, assuring him that he is okay. Taking their distraction as an advantage, Ivan tries to escape but is stopped by Yan and his bodyguards. Yan angrily asks him where he is planning to flee after kidnapping his nephew and Wa. Chi Anmo tells Yan that the cafe is shady, while Fong is more focused on what Yan just called him. Chi Anmo then tells the guards to bring him some bruised weeds, search the entire place, and call the cops. He wants to say something else, but Fong stops him, saying he has something to tell him. Chi Anmo is secretly happy at how Fong is obedient now and leans down to hear what the other has to say. Fong tells him that there is a room filled with his pictures and requests that Chi Anmo destroy it. Chi Anmo follows his request and tells Ai Ven to lead the way if he doesn't want to get beaten up again. Yana also joins them, curious to know what is happening, and tells his guards to take care of Fong. Inside the room, they are shocked to see so many of Fong's pictures. Chi Anmo praises Ivan, saying his stalking skills are so good that he didn't even realize they were being followed these past few days. He continues to say that he has to destroy all the pictures and their originals. Chi Anmo picks up the camera from the table, saying he will let him get away with the crime if he destroys the camera with his own hands. Ivan shouts that they can't do this to him as this is his life, but Yan just calmly asks him if he would like to spend time in jail instead. Seriously, giving him a way out is too merciful. Ivan is still sure he's not going to prison, but Yan breaks his hope when he says that Bo Wen can't help him anymore. He tries to scare Ivan by telling him how Chi Anmo belongs to an influential family. Ivan yells that he did his research and that there is no person named Chi Anmo in the Qian family. Yan just replies that he must know about him belonging to that family. Ivan is shocked to hear that and rushes to catch the camera Chi Anmo suddenly throws. Chi Anmo coldly tells Ivan to destroy the camera before his patience runs out. Ivan's hands shake as he holds the camera in his hand and finally smashes it to the ground as Chi Anmo shouts at him to do so. He kneels on the ground, sadly looking at the camera, devastated by how his hard work and future are all gone, which makes him angry at Bo Wen. They could've just destroyed the memory card or film, but yeah, the camera it is so that Ivan learns his lesson. Outside the room, Fong's knees have been bandaged, and he is wondering why Chi Anmo hasn't returned yet. Just then, he hears footsteps and turns around, happy to see the lawyer approaching him. He asks Chi Anmo if they beat up Ivan again, as he just heard noise from inside. Chi Anmo replies that they just forced Ivan to destroy his camera and softly rubs Fong's head, asking him if he is happy. Fong smiles brightly at Chi Anmo and says it is good because Ivan will not do something terrible again since his tool is destroyed. Chi Anmo replies that Fong shouldn't forget about his profession and says that he will get justice for Fong, and Ivan will get the punishment he deserves. Good, his being out and about leaves a bad taste. Fong's heart starts to beat faster at Chi Anmo's words, but he doesn't get a chance to calm it down as Chi Anmo suddenly picks him up in bridal style. Fong tries to protest, but Chi Anmo just asks him how he will get back when he can't even walk. Fong argues that he can walk, but Chi Anmo is not phased by his act as he just presses a soft kiss on Fong's head, saying that he doesn't want him to get hurt again. Fong suddenly remembers Parker and asks Chi Anmo if they saw him when they came in. Chi Anmo just calls his uncle, and he quickly assures them that he will take care of the situation here. Fong wants to say something else, but Chi Anmo just walks away, holding him and promising his uncle they will visit him someday. Once they reach the hotel, Fong is already asleep with his head, leaning on Chi Anmo's shoulder. Instead of waking him up, Chi Anmo tells his driver in a low voice to go inside and make preparations. Chi Anmo softly caresses Fong's cheek, thinking about how he must be exhausted because of that scary situation. He promises to never let any danger come near Fong again, and he suddenly kisses him directly on the lips. I swear he has no control over his urges. When Fong wakes up, Chi Anmo is still holding him. Fong is confused about how he fell asleep. He is startled when Chi Anmo speaks up, and he instantly calls Chi Anmo out for hugging him close as he carries him again. Fong quickly asks to be let down, embarrassed that someone will see them, but Chi Anmo assures him there is no one else here. Chi Anmo then tells him to look forward, which confuses Fong a little, but he still follows the order. He is speechless to see a setup of a candlelight dinner in front of him, and his first thought is how he can take so many inspirational pictures from this setup. Hmm. Can we consider this as their first official date? Shi Anmo wants to know his opinion, but Fong is more focused on discreetly searching his phone and is heartbroken when he remembers that he doesn't have his phone with him. When Shi Anmo puts him down on the seat, 
Fang fully realizes the situation and hesitantly asks if this dinner is meant for them. Chi Anmo seems angry to hear this as he sharply asks Fang if he wants to have dinner with somebody else instead. Fang quickly defends himself, saying he doesn't want somebody else, but they are just friends, and it is not suitable for them to act as a couple. Chi Anmo replies that couples can't be the only ones to have candlelight dinners together. Besides that, the things they have done together already surpass the boundaries of friendship. Fang quickly replies that it was just an accident and that their relationship is still not strong enough for them to have this dinner together. I just hope that they will make progress soon. Chi Anmo finally backs down and accepting whatever Fang is saying and starts to feed him. He pours wine into the glasses while saying that this dinner is compensation for getting angry with Fang yesterday. That momentarily confuses Fang, so Chi Anmo reminds him of yesterday's argument about Bo Wen. After remembering that, Fang also apologizes for arguing with Chi Anmo about the situation without knowing what type of person Bo Wen is. Chi Anmo slowly raises his hand to wipe something from Fang's cheek, while saying that he is the one who should be apologizing for putting Fang in danger. Chi Anmo is surprised when Fang suddenly drinks the whole glass of wine in one shot. Fang slams the glass back on the table and says that when he was with Ivan yesterday, he mentioned how Bo Wen was the one behind all this, as he wanted to trap Fang there forever. He asks Chi Anmo if Ivan is telling the truth, to which the lawyer quickly replies that Ivan is bluffing. Fang is relieved to find that he was just overthinking. Suddenly, Chi Anmo comes near him and holds Fang's cheek. He says that even if Bo Wen plans to harm him, he will do anything to keep Fang safe from any kind of danger. Fang is flustered by the action and says that if Chi Anmo keeps flirting with him like that, he will be responsible for the consequences. Chi Anmo replies that he will care for Fang even when his hair turns gray, as long as he is alive. He seals his promise with a kiss on Fang's lips. A short while later, Fang is withering and shivering as Chi Anmo provides him service. Fang can no longer hold himself and instantly gets embarrassed after his release. Chi Anmo just finds it cute and asks him to rest for now as he will go to the bathroom. Before he can leave, Fang quickly stops him by holding his arm and saying he can't leave him hanging like that. Chi Anmo is surprised by the sudden obedience and pushes Fang, saying he should help him in this case. Fang is worried as he confesses that he hasn't done something like this before, but Chi Anmo quickly assures him that they will only use his hand today. This is indeed progress, but not quite the progress I have in mind. The next day, Fang wakes up and is confused when he feels himself lying on some hard surface. He looks up and is startled to see Chi Anmo sleeping beside him. At first, he doesn't understand why they are sleeping together, but a flashback from last night reminds him of everything. He is upset that he lost himself again like that and slaps himself, asking himself to get a grip. Fang is more worried that Bo Wen might find out about his activities with Chi Anmo. Just then, Chi Anmo softly rubs his head, asking him what he is thinking about so deeply. Fang replies that he is thinking about Bo Wen instantly angering Chi Anmo, who asks him why he is thinking about someone else now. Fang quickly backtracks, saying he is not thinking anything, but Chi Anmo doesn't believe him. This is why you should think twice before you speak, Fang. You'll end up digging your own grave. Chi Anmo pinches Fang's cheeks, calling him ungrateful for thinking about someone else after they spent a great night together. Fang quickly presses a hand on his mouth to silence him. Chi Anmo softly kisses his palm, asking Fang to only think about him in the future. The possessive statement offends Fang, who quickly sits up, saying there's no point in thinking about Chi Anmo. He reveals how Bo Wen told him before about Chi Anmo and how he likes to do explicit activities in different places. Chi Anmo is irritated that Fang actually believed that and quickly hugs him, saying nothing really happened between him and Bo Wen. Fang doesn't believe him and is embarrassed when Chi Anmo says he doesn't like the balcony, but Fang can choose any other place he wants. This cunning lawyer is going to corrupt our innocent artist. Fang quickly changes the topic, saying he wants to visit Yan so he can check on Parker. Chi Anmo agrees to take him there while internally swooning over his cuteness. At his home, Yan is woken up by the maid, who informs him that Chi Anmo and his partner are already at the house. Can we update our collective crush? Chi Anmo's uncle is such a treat to the eyes. He tells the maid to leave and slowly gets up, still tired even after his sleep. Just then, he hears some grumbling and looks back to find Parker staring at him. He is confused by the kid's presence there but remembers that last night, he decided to tend to the child himself after all the maids failed to handle him due to his tantrums. Jan slowly turns toward the kid and is annoyed when Parker shows more resistance than yesterday. After a lot of struggling, 
Jan manages to pick up the child and tells him that he is just taking him to the person he saved yesterday. In the living room, Fang sits silently, thinking about how Jan must be crazy rich. Judging from his vast mansion, a grape suddenly appears in his line of sight as Chi Anmo asks him to taste the fruit. Fang replies that he just injured his legs and his hands are completely fine. His statement does not affect Chi Anmo, as he just asks Fang to feed him instead. Fang is embarrassed by the continuous flirting of the other and blushes hard when Chi Anmo says that the grape will taste better if someone feeds him. Just then, Yan comes there with the child, feeling like he is intruding on some private moment. Fang quickly perks up after seeing that the kid is alright and asks him for his name, as he didn't get the chance to find it yesterday. Eh, so Parker isn't his real name? Yan replies that Ivan has given the kid his name, but he hates it and never responds to it. Yan further explains that even though the kid is very scrawny, he's actually 15 years old. Fang is shocked to find that, as he figures that Ivan must have been torturing him a lot for him to be so small at 15. Yan replies that it is true, but it is good that they no longer have ties with each other. Fang asks Yan if he is helping the kid to change his guardian. His statement worries Chi Anmo, who instantly asks his uncle if he plans to adopt the child. Yan replies that he can't do that since if those old men find out about him gaining an inheritor, they will raise hell. Fang is surprised to hear that as he figures that Yan must be from some wealthy background. This makes him realize that Chi Anmo also can't be an ordinary lawyer. Fang is a little slow to come to conclusions, but it's alright since I am not a bright star either. Before he can think about it further, Chi Anmo caresses Fang's cheek, telling him to bring the kid to watch TV as he is going out for a moment, for his uncle is itching for a puff. Chi Anmo stands up to walk away, still looking back at Fang and telling him he is leaving. Yan is amused at how his nephew is clingy to his lover. As they go, Fang can't help but feel that Chi Anmo is very distant from him. Chi Anmo and Yan are on the balcony, where Yan asks his nephew when he plans to return to China. Chi Anmo replies that they will stay there until Fang's leg is completely healed. Yan mentions how he notices Chi Anmo's affection toward Fang and asks if he plans to settle down with him in the long term. Chi Anmo blushes a little and confesses that being with Fang makes him happy. Yan is delighted to see his nephew having feelings towards someone. Still, he worries that it will be difficult for him to have freedom in marriage right now. Chi Anmo instantly frets upon hearing this and asks if Yan is talking about his father. Seeing him worried like that, Yan asks him to relax, saying he can stay peacefully at his place for some time. He continues that Chi Anmo can inherit his family business and suggests that he discuss it with Fang. Chi Anmo replies that he is not interested in Chan's family business, but Yan advises him not to make any rash decisions, saying that he is much better than his older brother. Chi Anmo says it doesn't matter how useless his brother Bai is, for he is still considered the perfect person to inherit it. He adds that if Bai hadn't had the accident, this opportunity of getting an inheritance would never have come to an illegitimate child like him. Yan tries to comfort his nephew, but Chi Anmo ignores him saying that he wouldn't want Zhou Li to have him if he had the choice. Yan is worried that Chi Anmo is still offended by being used by Zhou Li and can't understand how a perfect child like Chi Anmo can be born from a mother who just wants to gain benefits for herself. 